I'd like to call the ninth regular meeting of the 2020-21 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agent of human change. Thank you very much. Next, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Bourne? Here. Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Donahue? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Phillips? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Here. Alderperson Sorensen? Here. Alderperson Flicky Paneski? Here. There are 10 present. Thank you very much. Next is the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of the minutes from our regular council meeting held on July 20th. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from July 20th. Is there Second. A, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, will the, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is uh, mayor's appointments. I'll turn it over to city attorney, Charles Adams. Thank you. 1.4 is uh, an appointment for your consideration from the mayor, uh, Alexandria King Close to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee. That'll lay over. 1.5 is uh, the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration. Kyle K. Board to be considered for appointment to the Board of License Examiners, fill a vacancy with the term of firing on April 19, 2021. That appointment also lays over. 1.6 is confirmation of mayor's appointments. Uh, as a result of the resignation of Todd Wolf from the Common Council, the mayor is submitting the following appointments for your confirmation. Roberta Felicki Podeski to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, Dean Decker to be chairperson of the Public Works Committee and Betty Ackley uh, to be on the Public Works uh, Committee. Uh, Dean Decker to the Transit Commission. Dean Decker to the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry. Betty Ackley to the Mayor's International Committee and Trey Mitchell to the Redevelopment Authority. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to confirm the appointments. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for passage. Older person, Flicky Pneski? Yes. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to public forum, city clerk. There's no one this evening. Thank you. Um, then we'll have a presentation by our human resources. Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations on the Human Resources Update and Strategic Plan by Vicki Schneider. Vicki? Mr. Mayor? Okay. So tonight I'm happy to be with you to share uh, some of the updates that have happened uh, since I've come on board as the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations, I have a really super long title, so we have to always remember all the parts to it. Um, as you are well aware, we had an audit uh, last year that was begun and was presented earlier this year uh, with a lot of recommendations uh, for the department. So I wanted to just share with you a little bit of where we're at and... Uh, 
The vision that I have, and I think I've shared this with you before, is that we would really like the city of Sheboygan to be an employer of choice. I think uh, working for the organization is an awesome experience. I think it is a great opportunity for people to be part of their community and to give back. I think this is a, a valiant vision for us to have as a department and as, a, as an organization. So there's two strategic goals that I was uh, considering and looking at as uh, I studied the CLA report and have entered into that position. Um, first, is, first of all, we really need to focus on our folks and our people um, and have them perform as a team and to be high functioning and serve the organization as professionals. And that is something that I'm really excited about being able to provide uh, that guidance for the team that exists and that I truly believe that we're moving in the right direction. The second part is that the Human Resources Department should really serve as a, as a strategic and operational partner to all the departments for the city. And uh, there's uh, processes in place so that we can become uh, able to do that. Part of that is regaining the trust of uh, my fellow colleagues. So again, looking at the action plan, there's really this two-pronged approach uh, to create and nurture this team that I have, and they're really good people, and they've worked really hard, and we're, we're moving together, um, and we're looking at using the values that the city has. We have awesome values. We have a great mission, and to really use that to embed those behaviors and actions into the into the way that we behave as a team and how we serve our community. I always say that we're the customer service department for the city and we need to look at that and, and share that, uh, that viewpoint. And then the other piece, and there's a lot of work to the second piece, is to build a strong operational foundation for our department. Uh, as you have looked at that report, um, there are a lot of pieces that we need, not a lot of opportunities to, to work on. Uh, but we are, again, moving in the right direction. So just wanted to share where we're at since, um, since July, actually. So we're looking at team development and having weekly team meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings. We've revised the job purposes. Uh, I sat with each of those folks to each of my team members to look at where we're at. There's a lot of things that are happening within each of these elements. Uh, but here's my July slide, sorry. Um, looking at, we hired a new uh, administrative services clerk too. It's kind of a, a, a merge of a position from the AP accounts payable clerk that had been in the finance department. We really believe that that could be served by a part-time position and then we could have some of that role be uh, serving human resources. So that position came over to the human resources department and we hired Christina Lepto. Uh, she's been a breath of fresh air for the department. She's uh, super engaged. She's got a lot of energy to help with process improvement. That's that's her background. Um, and so then we had uh, Todd Wolf as the new city administrator. He certainly has set goals for us and has put us into action a lot uh, with the things that we're doing. One of the things we did within the first week that he was here is we had a team meeting with, that was about two and a half hours work looking at team building, seeing his vision, his, his opportunity to speak to the team as the administrator rather than as a council member. I think that set a new tone for us, uh, introduced the team to him, and also set a strategy and a vision for how we're going to move ahead. And I think the team itself is very excited about having that sense of direction. So following that, we had one-on-one -on -one meetings, or I did, with, with each of my team members. We reviewed their job purposes. We we're going to make some changes to those, as well as then set some goals. That is something that I think is new for them, that they hadn't really had an opportunity to dream a little bit. And I think that's exciting as well. Um, and then as far as looking at the second, if you look at the second part of that action plan, 
that there's a lot of foundational things and we needed to pick something to start with. So we're looking at process improvement through the payroll system that causes uh, some conflicts once in a while with, with accuracy or timeliness. And that's something that I know that we can affect change on. So we've had a payroll audit done. Uh, we're looking at the payroll change notices. So that's that form that we use to notify payroll when something needs to happen. Um, and looking at our pay grades and, and the, the schedule for that. Um, so there's been a lot of things that have happened. We're still reorganizing the department. There's still some changes yet that will come as far as what roles will happen. We're expanding roles and the team is excited about that. And uh, we're looking at, I did do a presentation for the department heads so that they also know that we're making progress and what that's going to look like. And so I wanted to share this uh, with you as well. That's all. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for that presentation, Vicki, and for the great work you're doing in the HR department. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Uh, the city is in the beginning stages of the Armory Demolition Project. We signed a contract with Best Enterprises, but we'd like to help uh, the community preserve the memories that uh, the um, Armory has brought us over the years. So we invite residents to share their stories and memories of the Armory uh, at armorystories.com. Do you have a fond memory, a special experience, or a unique item related to the Armory that you want to preserve? The city is requesting residents submit these stories on the armory.com website now through September 6th of 2020. The published submissions will be viewable to the public through July of 2021. Our summer street construction schedule is in full swing. We have a, a number of different types of projects. First of all, there's street resurfacing projects that are done by our DPW crew. And then we have contracted street resurfacing projects and then contracted street reconstruction. Uh, some of the projects under the uh, resurfacing projects by the DPW crew are Seaman Avenue, North 21st to 24th Street, North 10th Street from Erie to Superior, Martin Avenue from North 15th Street to North 18th Street, and North 18th Street from Martin Avenue to Calumet Drive. And if time allows, the DPW is hoping they can still squeeze in a resurfacing project at Park Avenue along Volrath Park. Our contracted street resurfacing project is Gilly Avenue, Calumet Drive to North 23rd Street. And then some of our contracted street reconstruction is around the, uh, the Coakley Tannery building. That would be Superior Avenue from uh, Taylor Drive to North 29th Street, Maryland Avenue, South 10th Street to South 11th Street, Illinois Avenue, South 10th to South 11th, and South 11th Street, uh, Maryland Avenue to Illinois Avenue. And then we also worked hard on our railroad crossings of the Union Pacific Railroad, and new crossings have been installed at Broadway Avenue, Nyack Road, Martin Avenue, Calumet Avenue, Wildwood Avenue, Indiana Avenue, South 12th Street, Greenfield Avenue, New Jersey Avenue, and South Taylor Drive. The resurfacing plan was financed with road aids, uh, funding from the state of Wisconsin, portions of the garbage fee, bonding from the city capital improvements program, and Sheboygan County uh, sales tax revenue, and also the vehicle registration fee and uh, some items in the DPW operating budget. And funding from the, also for, we had funding uh, from the city housing and urban development budget allocation. About one third of the street resurfacing projects will be done by the DPW department staff, having the public works employees using an asphalt paving machine along with purchasing asphalt from Sheboygan County Highway Department, which results in overall lower costs for street repair and ultimately allows the department to repair more miles of streets. Uh, you may have noticed that uh, the South Breakwater Repair Project is going on. In December of 2019, Michaels Corporation was subcontracted by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to perform the marine construction scopes work on the Harbor South uh, Breakwater Repair Project. The breakwater uh, extends into Lake Michigan and is a crucial safeguard for our harbor. 
Within the scope of phase one, Michael's construction will install 2,500 feet of uh, internally braced steel sheet piles. Inside the walls created uh, with the new sheeting, 7,000 tons of fill stone will be added. The outer perimeter of the sheeting will be further protected by another 2,000 tons of scour stone. And the new breakwater will receive a concrete cap that is 30 feet wide and one foot taller than the existing structure. Work commenced in April of 2020 and is, uh, has excellent progress and has been made. A substantial completion is slated for uh, summer of 2021. Now this is only gonna do uh, from the harbor entrance to about halfway into uh, the land. And then the U.S. Corps of Engineers is expected to soon bid the phase two project and contract for the remaining section of the South Pier reconstruction. This is our uh, COVID update uh, for Monday, July 20th. First of all, let's review the numbers in comparison to last week. So uh, the, last week we had 566 positive cases. We went up 125 cases to 691 as of today. And that's the highest increase that we've seen in a week since the COVID uh, started. Uh, we have uh, 178 active cases. This is down 14 from last week. We have 505 cases that have recovered. That's an increase of 136 cases from last week. Uh, we're standing still with three persons in the community that are hospitalized. And unfortunately, we had four more deaths in the last week. We went from four deaths up to eight. Uh, the negative test count has increased by 1,672 to a total of 20,660 tests. And the percentage of uh, positive tests, the total test, went up about a third of a percentage point from 2.89 to 3.2. Sheboygan County public health officials released the Sheboygan County Safe Restart Recommendation Plan to reopen that included strong controls for businesses and residents. We continue to be in phase two of that plan, which says that businesses, uh, as they open, need to follow the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation's best practices and sanctions specific to their sector. The Mead Library and other city buildings, including City Hall, have instituted a mandatory mask policy to enter public areas of these city buildings. Maps will be provided at the entrances if needed. Now, last Friday, Governor Evers declared a public health emergency and signed emergency order number one relating to prevailing, preventing rather the spread of COVID-19 by requiring them wearing a mask at indoor and outdoor public spaces where people congregate. Sheboygan County law enforcement agencies, including the Sheboygan Police Department, will utilize this order as an educational tool. And they're asking citizens and visitors of the county to voluntarily comply with this order. As the COVID-19 numbers have dramatically increased, the food truck gathering that has taken place at Valdreth Park and is an event where little social distancing had taken place and caused concerns. The vendors have approved a plan on how they could address the lack of social distancing at this gathering to make it safer. The food truck vendors uh, have agreed to changes to make this popular event safer for those attending. Their plan includes uh, vendor staff uh, that have direct contact with food preparation and customers will be masked. Signs and cones or markers at order lines to set up six feet apart at each truck to encourage social distancing. Each truck should post instructions on when to return for pickup to discourage people gathering, uh, waiting for their order to be done. And hand sanitizer should be available at each truck. It was also welcome to see many of our commercial businesses in the community taking action to require masks while shoppers conduct business at their facilities. It's good to see that they recognize the role they can play to help protect the health and well-being of the community they serve by following the evolving guidance of health officials. So remember to wear your mask, slow the spread of coronavirus in Sheboygan.
Next, we'll uh, continue with the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.10. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all reports of the committee, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Older person Flicky Paneski. Older person Flicky Paneski, are you there? Yes, and I. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under uh, reports of officers, item 3.1 is RO number 43 of 2021 by the Board of Water Commissioners. Request the withdrawal of preliminary resolution under resolution number 157 of 1920, adopted February 17th of 2020, and resolution number 178 of 1920, adopted on March 6th of 2020, due to the Wisconsin Public Service Commission's approval of a lead service line repa replacement program utilizing grant and loans from the Sheboygan Water Utility rather than assessments. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file the RO. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Alderperson Flicky Paneski? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Items 3.2 and 3.4 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item number 4.1 is resolution number 61 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen Donahue, authorizing entering into a consent and estoppel certificate on behalf of the city of Sheboygan regarding the Oscar Apartments project. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to suspend the rules and adopt the resolution. Is there any objection to suspension? Is there a second? Second. Please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, this is Alderman Boren. I have a question for uh, either Chad or Attorney Adams. Go ahead. I read, I read over the agreement uh, over the weekend when I was preparing for the meeting and uh, the question I have, it looks like what we're doing here is just assuring, assuring the bank uh, of certain things that both parties have to do. Uh, uh, one thing I had a question on in the agreement, uh, does, this, does this create any more uh, exposure for the city in case of uh, a loan uh, uh, that the loan doesn't get paid back? Go ahead, Chad. To answer your question, Alderman Bourne, it does not. Um, this is a, we have a pay-as-you-go TIF incentive on this project, so if they don't create the increment, that's our, um, you know, our issue. Uh, that's their issue, I should say. Um, this, this estoppel is, a, is basically us taking a lesser position in their financing order, but um, unlike a lot of the projects that we've done, this is on private property that they own. Um, so it's not like it's a city-owned property that we're worried about the financing going sour and having to lose out on, on some future development because they already own that property. 
Thank you. And then if there are some minor there are some minor things that are a little bit different than the previous agreements are really not particularly substantive. Uh, it may it may require us to give a few extra days of notice for some things, but that's about it. And if I Thank can you. just if I can just add a general comment for the older persons, this is the last piece of the puzzle to try to they're closing on their funding on August 14th. Um, they've been in our office already getting ready to pull building permits and they're going to start construction on this project in September. So um, this financing is for $31 million to fund that project. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Older person Flicky Paneski? Aye. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is resolution number 62 of 2021 by Older Person Sorensen and Donahue. Repealing resolution number 157 of 1920 and resolution number 178 of 1920 regarding assessments for the installation of new water mains and or laterals in Geely Avenue from Calumet Drive to North 23rd Street. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I move for approval of the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Flicky Paneski? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 4.3 is resolution number 63 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Phillips, establishing a temporary polling location for the August 11th, 2020 election for wards 15, 20, and 21 in the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we adopt the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? And Alder Donahue here. Go ahead. I just wanted to um, express my appreciation and I expect everyone um, to uh, Meredith for so diligently seeking out another accessible polling location. Um, again, I think Meredith has gone way above and beyond and uh, and the voters are uh, in a better position uh, as a result of that. So just wanted to say thanks. Thank you're you for here. those comments. Is there any other discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Alder person Flicky Paneski? Aye. <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of rather uh, re items 4.4 through 4.8 will be referred to various committees. And under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 102 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred RO number 25 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications and wishes to report that at its meeting on July 29th of 2020, your committee voted to conditionally recommend, recommend that the Common Council not renew the beverage operator's license number 7460 held by Stephanie M. Garcia. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and deny the application. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? We should determine whether Ms. Garcia uh, appeared at the meeting and wishes to speak. She does have that right. 
No, she has not appeared. Thank you. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Flicky Paneski? Aye. <clears throat> Ten eyes. The motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 103 of 2021 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred resolution number 59 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Decker authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a memorandum of understanding with Advocate Aurora regarding the terms and understandings between the parties with regard to the location, construction, and fiscal responsibilities for the infrastructure improvements associated with the development of a new Advocate Aurora Hospital located on the parcel northwest intersection of Taylor Drive and Union Avenue, and recommends adopting the resolution with amendments to the Memorandum of Understanding to insert new Section 1, which clarifies that Aurora Healthcare Inc is entering into this agreement on behalf of all related entities to insert an additional sheet to the GRAFE plans and to account for the estimated cost of $110,345 related to that sheet and to make certain grammatical revisions. Alderperson Sorensen, rather, yeah, Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution with the amendments to the MOU. Okay. Thank you for that motion and support. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Alderperson Sorensen. I move to amend the MOU so as to update Exhibit A as to include the most recent and final set of Union Avenue scope breakout drawings, which a copy has been added to board docs, and to update Exhibit B as to include the breakdown of project and city costs, but eliminate the, quote, neighboring Pro property impacts, end quote. These claims also eliminate the need as part of the MOU to account for the estimated cost of um, $110,000 in, in $345 for the extension of the length of sanitary sewers, which project will be done by the city separately from the larger project provided as in the MOU. Is there a second? second? Thank you for that amendment. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Uh, Alderman Boren. Go ahead, Alderperson. A question for uh, David Beeble. Uh, David, uh, does that $110,345 go on the city's tab or is that on Aurora's tab? I really am not clear on that. That's correct, Alderman Boren. Uh, that that hundred and ten thousand was always part of the city's cost contribution towards this project. It was just a matter of how it was going to be constructed and funded as part of the MO, this MOU that is before you tonight. And uh, instead of trying to attach it to the larger project, we're just going to pull that off and still continue it. But it was always necessary and always an expense as part of the project. Any follow-up, Alderperson Boren? Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll vote on the amendment. Will the clerk, oh, well, I think oh, I can do roll call. Oh, and just, can. All those in favor I of the still have a, I, I still need a, I still need a clarification on that. <clears throat> What's the question? My question is then, does that $110,345, is, is that part of the 600 and some thousand or is that an additional 110 oh. above the 600,000? Yeah, it is, it is an addition to that 660,000 um, because this is part of not necessarily, this, this improvement is actually going to be part of the improvement to extend sanitary sewer for future connection for the acuity, uh, future additions. So it's a necessary as part of that agreement with acuity. 
I also, I also, uh, uh, Mayor, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank Director Beeble for this negotiation with Aurora Healthcare uh, for the, for securing Aurora Healthcare paying that four four point nine million dollars. And it's my understanding from talking to Director Beeble about this last week. Uh, Prior to that, the city's share was going to be in excess of a million dollars, but by this, they, uh, by Director <coughs> Beeble and the city's team sticking to their guns, uh, it's, uh, the amount is substantially less than it was going to be. So again, I want to thank Director Beeble and his team for his excellent negotiation on this uh, on behalf of the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion on the motion or the amendment? Very well. Um, well, all those in favor of the amendment as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Motion, amendment passes. Then I'll need a motion to approve as amended. Move to approve as amended. Is there a second? To, okay, we have a motion to approve as amended. Is there any other discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? <clears throat> Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 104 of 2021 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 9 of 2021 by Alderperson Sorensen and Decker, amending Section 26 of 147 of the Municipal Code relating to the classifications and license registration fees for contractors so as to add a classification for carpenter accessory contractors, remove a classification for registered business owner contractors and make minor modifications to the type of work that may be performed by each contractor classification and recommends adopting the ordinance. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Alderperson Flicky Paneski? Aye. Ten ayes. Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll go on to uh, general ordinances. Items 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to various committees. Other matters authorized by law, I'll turn it over to our city attorney, Charles Adams. 7.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending April 14, 2021, June 30, 2021, and June 30, 2022. That'll be referred to the License Hearing and Public uh, Safety Committee. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene into closed session under exemption provided in Section 19.851E under the Wisconsin State Statutes where competitive bargaining sessions require a closed session related to the possible financial guarantees for development opportunity in the proposed innovation district adjacent to Indiana Avenue and South Commerce Street. There, thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll for closed session? Alderperson Flicky Pneski? Aye. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Uh, council will take a short two minute recess. We uh, will be adjourning in closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening. Thank you very much and have a good night. <clears throat>